We as humans are looking all over the universe for alien intelligence. But maybe that alien intelligence is right here in the ocean. And we just haven't been looking with the right attitude and the right approaches. We've invested a good five years of our research life into this project. It's a big gamble. I'm hoping right now, big time, that it will work. I took this video, I've looked at it hundreds of times, and I'm still amazed by how it works. Squids, cuttlefish, octopus, the only animal group on this planet that can change its appearance instantly. The details of this come out when you play reverse slow motion. Smooth white skin, ring develops around the eye. That's five million little pixels in the skin, so it's like electric skin. Now another 25 million create the pattern and most amazingly, the smooth outline of the body, you see it go morphing into 3D. There is not another animal that can do this. How can we quantify that? How can we understand that phenomenon? This just drives me uh, forever and ever. They can do a lot of things that we'd like to be able to do and can't. And so, you know, maybe they've come up with this alien intelligence. There simply could not be a better place on this earth to do this sort of study. And that's why we've come this far. <laughs> One of the goals that we have by using this very complex and technologically advanced camera is to find out if there are signals that other animals can see that we cannot. For example, in butterflies, some of them have patterns on their wings that are only visible if you have ultraviolet vision, which other butterflies have, but we don't. So we never see these secret patterns on these animals. Typical human-made device has three colors in every pixel, red, green, and blue. Ours has 16 colors. They're tuned right across the full visible spectrum, including the ultraviolet, because other animals can see those colors that we do not see. Ah, there it is, the father and his baby. <laughs> it took about four years to develop the camera then took us a year to build specialized underwater housing for it. So I'm real proud of this thing, and we'll see if it works on this dive. This is the moment of truth, if ever there was one. We're covering a huge amount of area, and it's very hard to find a camouflage squid or a camouflage octopus. These kinds of studies have been done in the lab, but not in the wild. Because as you see, it's really difficult to collect data in real life conditions. We haven't been able to find an octopus yet. It's the uh, sort of holy grail on this uh, trip right now, and we have not reached it. We're about to go diving. We looked at each other and went, this is perfect. And here is this beautiful sepialata manis, which is the common broad club cuttlefish. We were down around 50, 60 feet. We wanted to move up in the water column where there was a bit more color. So I just ever so gently took the hyperspectral imager, which is the big green box, and just pushed it just slowly towards the animal and it would just move up 
it was so lovely because the animal was inspecting and reading me, I was reading the animal. We had beautiful teamwork going. As if that wasn't exciting enough, the second dive comes along and our phenomenal Indonesian local guide, Arif, signals he's got an octopus, which really performed for us beautifully. And we were able to let the animal move around on its foraging, different backgrounds, different camouflage, different postures, different skin texture. And we were able to record all of this. Dives do not get any better than this. What's exciting now, this is the best part for the scientists because now we convene together and we really concentrate. We shut the world out. We look at the images, we look at the color in these images, and we begin to see what different fish predators might see in those color images. Surprise. Here's the image. Wow. It will take different. some time interpreting. Wow, look at that. So we are looking from the perspective of totally different animals. This is pretty spectacular because this is the very first time that we've used the hyperspectral data set, That's right. applied it objectively to you know the, the background and the animal, and we've actually seen a difference the first time around. This is really only the beginning. Underwater, where we have fascinating animals like cuttlefish and octopus, they did not evolve their defense mechanisms, their dynamic camouflage mechanisms to evade human predators. So when we try to understand that with our eyes, we're only seeing a little bit of the picture. We should be an eel, we should be a dolphin, we should be a fish looking at these animals. Now we can go back and ask questions we couldn't ask before. We want to compare one animal to another. That will help us understand why animals behave the way they do. If you look at evolutionary time, the last common ancestor between the cephalopods and the vertebrate line, which includes us, was a worm many, many, many millions of years ago. And the cephalopods are the only group that have gone and taken a sharp left turn and developed complex behavior. So the question becomes, do they have the same or different brain cortical structure? If some other creature has developed new machinery, if you will, to create complex behavior, that is a very profound idea. If it's different, this is a different way to create intelligence on planet Earth.